I, so that, that was the question was going to be how you're approaching this through with singularity net, of course, because uh, now you're actually a part of multiple. You're on HyperCycle as well. I had the opportunity to uh, interview Tufi. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome guy. Uh, but you mentioned Cardano at the Ouroboros, right? With the yeah. proof of kind of th that proof mentality of being able to sustain an infrastructure that I forgot the exact term that you're referring to on that within reference, but is there a plan on or a shift where you've talked with Charles Hoskinson in integrations of an infrastructure like this through Singularity? Because I know they're both different. They're both built completely different. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think the future of blockchain is more and more widely acknowledged to be cross-chain rather than one blockchain that, that rules them all. And, I mean, Hoskinson himself has gone pretty hard in, 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 in that direction, working, I mean, there was, there was Hydra, but then there's Milk Amita, there, mm -hmm. there's a whole bunch of different technologies for interfacing between Cardano and, and other blockchains. And then doing an AI network that runs across different blockchains is a fairly natural thing in terms of how the blockchain mm -hmm. world is, is evolving now. And Cardano has a fantastic community and they have an amazing developer team that's developing really cool tools on, on top of their platform. So I think there, there's something valuable there in that group of people working on, on that cool technology. So we, we want to be in the Cardano world. On the other hand, as as you discussed with that, with Tufi, mm -hmm. while Cardano is way, way better than Ethereum as a substrate for AI in terms of formal verification, in terms of the level of decentralization that, 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 that it, it has in, 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 its cons in its consensus, and uh, having an AI-friendly smart contract language in, in Haskell, still, it doesn't do everything we wanted for it an underlying blockchain layer for AI. And if, if you want to scale down the use of blockchain in AI so that little pieces of your AI system can communicate with each other on chain, as opposed to just putting big chunks of AI into mm -hmm. nodes that communicate with each other on chain. We need, Cardano is better for that than Ethereum, but we needed something more customized for AI. So I mean, hi hypercycle, is, 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 that, is that, basically. So Tufi and Dan Tolliver's clever insight for how to build a blockchain without a ledger. I mean, this, among other advantages, it lets you make a blockchain that can be very fast and cheap for communication between, mm. between AI yeah. processes running in different nodes. So I'd actually I'd originally been thinking of hypercycle as a Cardano sidechain, and it can be that, right? You, you can use it as a Cardano sidechain. Like if you have a process in Cardano and you want to then offload some work and do an AI customized network, you, you can use HyperCycle as, as, as a sidechain to, to Cardano in, in, in that way. Yeah. But as we, as we work through more of the software development for HyperCycle, we realized, I mean, you could use it in a lot of ways. So you, you, could, you could use it as a layer one blockchain. You could also use it as what Tufi calls a layer zero, which is yeah. basically just use, use TOTA IP, which is the protocol underlying HyperCycle, as a substitute for TCP IP, the basic network, network protocol. It's slower, but it's more secure with a decentralized consensus mechanism, right? So, that, I mean, all that, all that is important because once we do break through to a human level AGI, at that point, once the breakthrough happens, you can't turn around and say, okay, now we need a decentralized infrastructure for this. Because while not as hard as building the AGI, <coughs> that's still years of work, right? Mm -hmm. So if you, if you make a breakthrough to AGI, say OpenAI releases GPT-5, we release something twice as smart as GPT-5, right? If you had to then turn around and say, how will I decentralize the infrastructure? <clears throat> it's just, it's, it's too hard a problem to solve, even with trillions of dollars, it's too hard a problem to solve in, in, in six months. These things just take some time to work through. So we're, we're working through all that now, step by step, figuring out how to make the decentralized infrastructure for 
both applied AI now and AGI once a breakthrough toward AGI occurs. Now, what's your prediction on the AI sector of this? Like, I know Tufi told me a crazy valuation of we're in a $3.2 quadrillion dollar market currently globally. <laughs> And uh, by 20, I think he said 2028, it's supposed to approach uh, almost double that at 3.6 quadrillion. Okay. I was like, I'm not gonna argue holy with smokes that. with this math, but. We may need a lot of inflation for that. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, that's a lot of money print. That's drone power just constantly turned out on, on, on full max. But even let's say like just a fraction well, of a I, fraction. I mean, I mean the, the thing is, if the rate of AI progress is as fast as I think it will be, then AI essentially becomes the world economy, or say 30% of the world economy, however you want to figure it. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're, you're still growing food and stuff, but the food may be, you know, agriculture will be regulated by AI systems that, that are, are governing ir crop irrigation and so forth, right? So, I mean, if AI advances so fast that AI is a substantial portion of, of the global economy, I mean, then, yeah, so then say a AI is half of global GDP, right? So in it's that ca in that case, if you have a platform that is the go-to platform for the for the world's AI, I mean this uh, this becomes very big. You could you could look at that platform being five percent of global GDP or something, right? Wow. I mean I mean that 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 that, and that that's. Setting aside the arithmetic, I mean, that, that's sort of what Tufi's thinking. He's thinking if, if by 2028 most of the economy is running on AI, and if the majority of the AI is running on hypercycle, I mean, perhaps on singularity net nodes running in hypercycle nodes, maybe using NuNet for deployment, but if it's running mm -hmm. on singular net ecosystem stuff, right? I mean, then, then yeah, that, 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 that could certainly be. Tremendous, right? And I yeah. mean, and that that seems strange, but on the other hand, I mean, if you go back to the '80s or even the mid '90s, companies like Google or Facebook, having the valuations they now have, would have seemed pretty crazy. Historically, common sense has been a poor guide to to which companies and which tools are going to become dominant, and the Visionaries like Tufi have existed at, mm -hmm. at every stage and are identified in, in hindsight. So.